Hi there, fifth wheel owners. Today on your 2020 Grand Design Momentum, we're gonna be taking a look at and showing you how to install Roadmaster's Comfort Ride Suspension System for triple axles. And this is what our Comfort Ride System looks like when it's installed. This is gonna be the ultimate in trailer suspension because each of our axles are gonna be completely independent from one another because of our slipper spring boxes. Additionally, on top of that, each axle has its own shock absorber so all the vibrations that you hit going down the road are gonna be absorbed significantly in our dampeners here, so it's not gonna transfer inside of our trailer. This is gonna result in all of your gear staying where it's supposed to be, no more cabinets slamming open, no more broken dishes when you get where you're going, and it's gonna just be an overall smoother ride pulling your trailer, because with shock absorbers and that on there, it's gonna help reduce sway and bouncing and everything else because it's all gonna to work together and there's no fighting like there was before, where when you hit a bump with one axle, it can transfer some of that force through the equalizer into another, and that can transfer into the frame of your trailer, and that goes inside and it starts rattling your components around. If we take a closer look at our slipper spring box here, you'll receive one of these that'll go between your axles. You'll have two in this kit since it's a full triple axle kit, so you'll receive two for each side to go between those. Here is the slipper side of our spring. The other side of the spring is just a traditional spring eye like you had before, but this side, instead of attack, attaching to an equalizer or to a hanger or something like that, it actually rests on top of a roller when our suspension is suspended like it is now. And then when we load the suspension up, the slipper spring here will contact the wear pad located on top right there, and it'll actually slide on the spring here because as this compresses, the spring's gonna wanna kinda bend down, it's going to push in just a little bit, and it's going to slide and ride right there on that wear pad. But you can see how that way whenever the axle goes to move upward or anything, like let's say we hit a pothole or we hit a, a bump on the road, maybe a speed bump, the axle will push up when we hit that bump here, but instead of pushing into the equalizer over here, you can see it can freely move up, and each axle is going to have this set up, so it's only going to affect itself whenever it hits a bump. It's not affecting any of the other axles. This setup is almost similar to what you would see on the rear of a truck. You have your leaf spring and your shock absorber here. So it's a very, uh, very nice system that's gonna give you a ride that's much similar to, uh, to what a truck would be versus your old equalizer type system where everything's just really abrupt. There are some equalizers out there that put dampeners in between them to help absorb some of that impact transferring from one axle to another. And those do make an improvement, but none of them are gonna come close to the ride quality that you're gonna get with a slipper spring setup like this. And here we can take a closer look at the shock absorbers that are installed in the kit. You'll have one for each axle, and the shock absorber goes on the side that the slipper's on, so that way when it goes to compress that slipper, it has to compress our shock absorber here. That's gonna help absorb some of that impact, so there's not gonna be nearly as much force transferring through our springs up into the frame. Additionally, if we go over like a pothole or something where there's a drop off and the axle wants to go down, you get dampening when it wants to extend as well. So it's not gonna be so abrupt. So you're gonna get dampening on both up and down. That's gonna help minimize sway and oscillations by dampening in both directions. And it's also gonna help a little bit with chucking as well, because it's going to help dampen both when it moves up and when it moves down. One of the things I do wanna note about this install is it's a pretty big install. This is, requires complete removal of your old suspension to replace it with the new system here. There is gonna be drilling required in order to get your slipper spring boxes installed. And even just getting the such a massive motorhome like this lifted up and jacked up is gonna take a while of preparation just to do so. You're gonna need plenty of jack stands to be able to support it all the way around. So just keep that in mind. You're also gonna to need to have a nice, large, clean work area. So if you're doing this at home, I would highly recommend to make this a weekend project because this is probably gonna take you, if it was a Saturday, the entire day likely to get this done and maybe even bleed into Sunday, depending on the tools you've got and how easily you were able to get everything set up to start the install. I also recommend having a couple of jacks on hand as well as multiple jack stands because if you've got a couple of jacks so you can move the axles up and down it can make taking the old suspension off a little bit easier and you can even potentially have a partner working with you on the other side to speed the install up if you've got multiple jacks now that we've covered some of the features of our suspension system why don't you follow along with us and we'll show you how to get it installed we'll begin our installation by first lifting our vehicle up and there's 
couple different ways you could do this. You could use a jack with jack stands and just lift it up one at a time, placing a jack stand at each corner to get it to where your wheels are off the ground. You could also potentially use your leveling jacks. You will have to place blocks under them. If you do use your leveling jacks in order to lift your vehicle up though off the ground, you do want to make sure that you still place jack stands underneath the frame because we don't want to trust just our hydraulics supporting the vehicle while we're working underneath. We can take a quick look up front because we did use uh, the front hydraulics there to help support the vehicle in the front when we were lifting it up and then we used our lifts to further support it. So now that we've got it lifted up so our wheels are off the ground, we can now just go ahead and remove each of our wheels. We're going to use a 19 millimeter socket for the lug nuts that are on these. If you don't have an impact at home, then what you would want to do is before you lift your vehicle up, you would want to crack these nuts loose first. That way you could easily, more easily get those off by hand. I highly recommend an impact though to save you a bunch of time. And we'll just repeat that to get the remaining wheels off. So now that we've got the wheels out of the way, we're going to be removing all of our old suspension components here and replacing them with new ones. When we go to remove these suspension components, there's really nothing that's going to be supporting the axles. So we've got three jack stands here. We're going to be placing them underneath the axles so that way when we take this hardware loose, there's going to be something there to catch them and that they can't just drop down. So now we're going to go ahead and put them underneath. We are going to go kind of far in with it because we want to give ourselves room to be able to get our jack under here because we are going to have to lift these up and down a little bit. It's going to make easier getting our hardware in and out if we can adjust each of our axles up and down slightly. And we have to remove our U-bolts as well to get these springs off of here. So we can't have anything underneath it or else we'll have a hard time getting those U-bolts out. So this should be pretty far enough back to where we've got plenty of space here to get our jack in place, get those U-bolts out and still support our axle. So we're just gonna repeat that for the other two. So with all of our supports in place, we can now start removing all the hardware. We're gonna have nuts here at the hanger at the point where it connects to our equalizers and the bolt that holds our equalizer on. They're all gonna be the same size. We're gonna use an 18 millimeter to remove the nuts off of each of these. You do wanna save some of your hardware here because these bolts here at the end on your spring eyelets at the very front and at the very back, you'll be reusing these bolts uh, or you could replace them. The bolts that our customer currently has in here are wet bolts and the bushings that come in our slipper springs are gonna be regular self-lubricating bushings where, where you don't lubricate them. They're the kind of never, never fail style. So there's no maintenance required. So we don't wanna have grease in those. The grease can actually damage the, that type of bushing, cause it to wear out faster. So we're gonna be putting regular spring eye bolts in here to get rid of those wet bolts. You can see all the grease we've got on there and we gotta get that out of there. So if you do have wet bolts in there right now, you'll wanna make sure you get all that grease out of there so it doesn't damage your bushings. So we're gonna get this nut off and then just take all the other nuts off and then we'll drive those out. So we'll remove all the nuts first. Now sometimes when you go to remove these bolts, the, the nut off the end, the bolt will actually rotate. It's not supposed to because it has a serrated edge that holds it in the flange, but if it does, we can take a wrench and put it on the other side. We're just sticking the 21 on the other side to hold it. So now that we've got all of our bolts loose, we can go ahead and just drive these out. It should just kind of knock out of there. So you can take your jack and place it under the axle if it's really bound up and you can lift your axle up and down slightly. And that can help make it easier to get those removed. You could also just use your hammer though with a little punch and just knock them out of there. So I knocked them with the hammer first and then I grabbed my punch and we're just gonna finish knocking the rest of the way out of there. This is why it's important we got our axle supported because there is a little bit of load on these. That's why you could move it up and down with your jack to help lower some of that load. But we can just punch it out of there just like that. So now we're gonna repeat this for the remaining ones to get those knocked out. If it's in your spring A, uh, your spring hanger, it's gonna be pretty much exactly the same, but those are typically difficult to drive out because we talked about earlier how the, they shouldn't rotate when you go to take those off because they're serrated in there. So to get past the serration, we have to drive it out. And if you just hit on the bolt itself when you're trying to drive it out, 
you oftentimes you'll mushroom the head of the bolt and then it's difficult to get that bolt to pass through because you've spread it out. So we can put the nut on there and the nut will actually kind of work as a collar to prevent that from mushrooming. So now we can give it a nice good whack. Just like that to get it to drive out. And once you've done the first bit of movement there, it's significantly easier to drive out at that point. So we've kind of mitigated uh, from mushroom that head by taking care of uh, getting it loose first. And now you can see much lighter tap there and it's already starting to move out of there. We are still in on this one over here. So before I finish driving that one out, I'm gonna get this one started as well. Uh, since this is triple axle, this is a spring eye here. So that means it's also serrated and kind of stuck in there. So we're gonna get this one pushed out to this point and then we'll take that one out. And we'll just work that out of there. And we're just gonna bring our axle back up a little bit. If you did have to lower it down, you kind of keep everything even. That's usually the easiest spot to get stuff out of there. So then we'll just head down to this side and finish getting the rest of these drove out. After removing the spring eye bolt, we're gonna be taking our, the entire uh, leaf spring off of there. So it can be a little bit easier to get the leaf spring in and out if we can drop the axle down some. So we just took our jack and we took about one tooth out of it to get a gap in here. And then we'll use our floor jack now. And we're just gonna lower this down onto that jack stand. We can go ahead and lock our jack in place. Now you can see the eye is down below the hanger. That's gonna make it easier to get this spring off of here. And we need to get all that grease and stuff cleaned up because we don't want any of that there. So next we're gonna be removing our U-bolts here so we can get our spring stack off. One of the things you want to just take a quick inspection of is your U-bolts because we want to make sure that they're going to be long enough to use with our new uh, leaf spring stack and there's a bracket that goes on top for our shocks. So you want to make sure you've got at least a half inch of thread sticking out the top of each one of these so you know you've got enough length. So like this one here looks like it's just long enough where it'd probably be okay to use, but this one here's a little bit short. So rather than taking any chances, we're gonna be replacing all of our U-bolts. You can get U-bolts here at e-trailer if you wanna replace yours as well. If on, upon inspection, you just don't think you got quite enough all the way around to properly secure your new brackets. So to get these off, we're just gonna remove these nuts. We do have our jack supporting our axle there. We're gonna use a 19 millimeter socket to remove these. And you may not be able to get your gun in there on the back ones. It looks like we got them loose enough to where we should be able to just kind of get them off of there the rest of the way. So we just switched over to a ratchet to get the, fur the ones that are in further. You could potentially lower your axle down a little bit further, but this is as far as ours wants to drop. So we'll just change tools. And this should just pull off, but sometimes your U-bolts kind of spread out a little bit. It's no big deal. You can just take your hammer you can just tap those down. If you're planning on reusing these U-bolts, I would do like we talked about before when we drove those ones out and just thread your nut on there just to help ensure that you don't damage the threads. We're replacing ours though, so we can just tap it down. And then usually once you get it kind of flush there, you can just kind of rock it sideways and it'll pop off of it. Our leaf will then just lift off and we can set that aside. We'll repeat that for the remaining leaves on this side, so that way we'll have this whole side completely removed of all of its old suspension components. So next we want to just do a little bit of prep before we go to install our new parts. Our previous bolts that were in here were wet bolts, so we're cleaning out all that grease because our new leaf springs use a different style of bushing and we don't want grease in there. Another thing we'll want to do is just prepare the bottom of our frame rail. We can see here that we've got a chrome 
trim type piece that's running along the bottom of the frame. We're going to be removing this uh, because our spring boxes, when we go to put them up, have to sit against the bottom of the frame. So about, about eight inches on each side of your spring hanger. You can take the spring hanger box, the slipper box, and just slide it over here to see, hold it up. And you need to make sure that there's nothing underneath the frame where that slides up or else it's going to collide with it. And we need to have it nice and flush with the bottom of the frame. I'm just going to grab it and hold it up there so you can see what I'm talking about. So here we've got our slipper spring box. There's the opening where it slides over our hanger. And so you can see now we're hitting on that trim piece. It's not going to be flush against the bottom of the frame. So we're going to get all that out of there because we need to have a nice even contact with the frame across the top here. So that way when it's supporting our all the weight here, it's going to be pushing that and transferring it into the frame. Now I've got the trim out of the way. I did tweak a couple of the lines to just bend those a little bit out of the way as well. We can see now that when we hold our box up, it's pretty much flush with the bottom of the frame. We're not hitting anything, but we are hitting a bit of this insulation here on both sides. So I'm just holding it up there and I'm just gonna make a mark. And now that we've cut on each side, we can see our little cuts that we made there. We're just gonna trim out some of this insulation all the way back just to where the frame is to the end of the frame there. That's about right here. And then we're just gonna cut this out. That way there's nothing in between the frame and our slipper spring box. You may have, it looks like there's some silicone kind of sealing up right here as well. We wanna get all this stuff off of here. So now we've got our area prepared here for our spring box. We've done that for both the middle spring hangers, not the ones at the very front and the back. We can now get it attached by placing a spacer in between the hanger. The spacer is a two inch spacer and the distance here is about an eighth of an inch thinner than that. So we are gonna have to use our hammer here to spread out our hanger a little bit so we can get this in place. checking now to see where we're at. That's pretty close. If we kind of want it to be a little snug, so if it's close, sometimes you can get uh, get it in place and tap the spacer in there. It's not quite ready yet, so we'll just keep spreading it out a little bit more. So I've gone ahead and spread it out just a little bit more, and we should be able to get it tapped in there now. There we go, we got it started. We're just gently now tapping it up and lining it up with those pre-drilled holes. Once you get it lined up, just take one of the larger bolts that come in your kit and just make sure that it does pass through. We can now take our slipper spring box. We're going to lift it up, sliding it around the spring hanger. It is going to be a little tighter now that we spread it out a bit. There we go. We're just gonna line that up with the hole in the hanger. And then we're gonna take that bolt and pass it from the outside straight through. We also wanna make sure we can see the Roadmaster sticker here. It's labeled outside on it. On the other side of our bolt, we're gonna place another flat washer and a nylon locking nut. So now we are gonna use our spring box here as a template to drill out the holes and use the included self-tapping screws to run it into the bottom of the frame. But we still got a little bit of a gap there and it's still a little bit loose. So we wanna just try to take up that play and make it snug so that way we can have an easier time getting those holes drilled out. So we're gonna use a 21 millimeter socket and a 22 millimeter wrench for the nut. We're just gonna get those lined up. And then what I like to do is just lay here on the ground underneath, I'm gonna use both my legs to push upward on the bracket. That way it's gonna be on the bottom of the frame, nice and snug. And then I'm gonna take my gun and my wrench here and I'm gonna snug down this bolt to hold it in place for me. So 
So now that we've got this snug down, before we go to drill out the holes to put it in the bottom of the frame, we want to make sure that it's straight front to back because it's not uncommon for your hangers to be tweaked a little bit left or right. And this sticks off so far from our fulcrum here. At this point, it could actually be pretty good distance sticking either out or in on the frame. So just take your finger and kind of just make sure that it's about the same distance, smooth and even along your frame front to back. This one was a little crooked. You can see a couple of marks here where I took my hammer to it just to give it a couple of whacks to knock it back straight. And that all looks pretty good. So now that we're nice in a nice straight line, we're ready to drill out the holes for our self-tapping bolts that's gonna hold this in place. You are gonna need a pretty strange size. This is a common size in a, in a full set of bits up to half inch. It is a 21 64th, so that is just a little, little bit stranger. So you may need a full set of bits in order to get this one, or you could buy this one by itself. And we're now just gonna drill through our frame using the holes here in the bottom uh, of our spring box here. And I am gonna kinda angle just ever so slightly towards the outside for the outside hole and then ever so slightly towards the inside for the inside hole because we wanna make sure we clear the center riser right here on the uh, I-beam. And it's gonna be ever so slightly. We wanna be almost perfectly straight and just a hair the one way just to make sure we clear. And then after I get a nice little start mark there, the I'm just gonna use a little bit of spray lubricant. That can just help the drill bit cut a little bit better. So now that we've got that hole drilled, I'm gonna take one of the self-tapping bolts and put it in place. I like to do these one at a time. So after I drill the hole, I put the bolt in place and that'll just help ensure that our, nothing can move and our holes don't line up anymore. So now we're just taking our self-tapping screw, we're using a 14 millimeter socket, and we're just gonna run it right in. And once I get it up to where it just kisses the bottom, that's really far enough. We're just trying to get a little bit of pressure on to keep it from moving. We'll torque them all down once we get each one in place. So now that I've got this one in place, I'm gonna move on it and drill out the remaining three, putting the bolts in place. After I get that all done on this spring hanger box, I'm gonna move to the other middle hanger and I'm going to do the exact same procedures to get that spring box installed. After you've got each one drilled out and a bolt started in them, we'll go back and torque all those to the specifications outlined in your instructions. So here we've got our old spring and our new spring. And if we look at our old spring, you'll see it's got a bunch of grease around the edges here. And if we look at the bushings inside of our old spring, we can see that the bushing is all worn out. It's actually got a pretty big chunk missing out of it there. Now, when this happens, in most cases, you can drive those bushings out and you can replace them. But if the bushing just falls through, the spring needs to be replaced. We're going to be upgrading to a new leaf spring on our trailer here. And if we look at the bushings on this one, it's a nice pre-installed bushing in there. But the bushing that's in here is a self-lubricating bushing. You can see it's made of a kind of a plastic style type of bushing versus the old ones we had that were lubricated. Those are bronze bushings. So when we go to put our new spring in, when we go to reuse our bolts, the bolts that were previously in there were wet bolts. And these are used so you can inject grease in there to lubricate between the bolt and the bushings so that way everything stays free. And that works out really well for extending the life of your bushings by keeping them greased, but you can see that they do still wear out. When you go to, to put in a different type of bushing that is self-lubricating, you don't wanna have any grease in there. The grease can actually deteriorate the bushing and cause it to wear out prematurely. So we don't wanna use these old wet bolts because they do have some grease in there. And they also have the potential of somebody going, oh, hey, there's a grease fitting, let me grease it. And then they end up greasing it and then we've got an issue down the road. So let's just take care of that issue and we're just gonna replace it with a regular step bolt. This one is designed to work with the one and three quarter inch double spring eye. This is just a single spring eye because of the type of suspension system we're putting on it here. 
but this is the correct size bolt to get it installed. And you can see here that this is just a standard bolt. It doesn't have a Zerk fitting, so this is designed to work with this type of bushing here, and it's going to prevent anybody from accidentally greasing it in the future. So we can go ahead and show you how to get these installed now. They're really easy to install. Once you've got your old ones out of there, it is just the bolt that you get. So this nut here is actually the nut from the wet bolt, but it's the same thread pattern. If you need new nuts, you can get those also here at eTrailer. So here's our bolt. You can see it's got a serrated flange on it there to keep it from rotating in the hanger. We've got our shoulder here where it sits inside of our bushing and the measurement of this bolt, this is a three inch bolt and that's from the bottom of the head there to the end of the threads. That's gonna give us a plenty usable portion here for our springs bushing to ride on and we've got plenty of thread sticking out to properly secure our bolt. It's a 9 16 diameter shoulder. So to get it installed, we're just gonna lift our spring into position. We're gonna take the spring eye and line it up in between our hanger. We'll then take our step bolt here and we're just going to slide it on through there now it's not uncommon for it to be a little stiff so we're just going to take a hammer and we're just going to tap it the rest of the way and we're not even hitting it that hard just kind of using the weight of the hammer to tap it on in there and then we'll secure it with a nut on the other side we can now tighten down that nut. It is gonna draw the bolt in some on the serrated edge, but we don't wanna over tighten our bolt. So after we put some pressure on it, we can then come back with our hammer and tap in the rest of the way. We'll then tighten down the nut. The nut that we had on here is gonna be an 18 millimeter socket and the head of the bolt will hold with a 21 millimeter wrench. So we're just drawing that in. And then there's still a little bit of a gap there, so we're gonna take our hammer. And just take a look at it there. It's nice and flat, so it's all the way driven in. Then we'll finish tightening it down. And then we can go back and torque it to the manufacturer's specifications. So now that we've got this one installed here, if you had a traditional leaf spring, with a double eye, you would just repeat that process for the one on the other side. We're installing a slipper box here, so we don't have an eyelid over here, so we're just gonna continue on with this installation. If you like the way a slipper setup is, or if you're interested about those, you can find out more about them here at eTrailer. So now that we've got the spring eye installed, the other end of our leaf spring, we're gonna take and we're gonna lift up. And first thing we wanna see is which of these holes here is going to make our spring level. So we're gonna lift it up first, slide our bolt through, and just drop it down and see how it looks. It looks like it's a little bit lower here. We're kind of dipping down on this side. So all we're gonna do is lift it up a little higher, slide our bolt through this hole, and let it sit back down. And this looks nice and level here. Looking at the, the I-beam and this here, this is nice and parallel with the frame. So this is what we're looking for. We want it to be level. So now that we know that we want to use this hole in order to achieve level on this particular trailer, we can install our spacer because it's actually not going to rest on the bolt. It's going to rest on this spacer. So to install the spacer, what I like to do is lift it up even higher, take this bolt, and I'm just temporarily sliding this bolt through here. And that's just going to hold that spring up out of the way for us so we can get this spacer installed. It usually is fairly tight to get it in, in between this bracket here. So we usually have to tap it into place. So we're just kind of bringing our hammer here. Just trying to tap it up in there. There we go. We got the tap up in there. So now we've lined it up with this bottom hole. But when we tested, we wanted to use this hole to achieve level. So we're going to tap it up. And it looks like we can actually move it by hand. It gets a little bit looser further up there. So now that we've got that roughly into position, we'll take our spring 
retaining bolt that we had temporarily installed in there. We're then gonna slide that through the hole that we chose and through that spacer. And then our spring's gonna rest down on top of that. We can then take the lock nut that matches up with this bolt and we're gonna place that on the other side. So now that we've got that bolt installed, that's gonna be kind of the limiter bolt that, that keeps our spring from going down. But when we lower our vehicle down and it starts to push up on this spring, we need something there for it to ride on or else it's just gonna go straight up and the spring's gonna be hitting basically on the bottom of the frame. So we've got this wear pad here that we're gonna put in place. We're just gonna take one of the larger diameter bolts, take our spacer here just like this with the flat part kind of sitting on top of the spring. We're just gonna roll it up into position there, slide our bolt through, and then take the lock nut that matches up with it and thread that on the other side. So now that we've got this hardware here loosely installed, we can repeat these same procedures to get our rear spring installed. It's gonna be just like this, except for you're gonna start at the rear hanger and it's gonna be going forward. It's gonna be kind of just mirrored of this. And here you can see our rear spring installed, how it's just like we did in the front. Uh, the only thing I wanted to talk about was with this one bolt here when we put this in, we chose the top large hole here because we had chose the top hole down here. If you use the bottom hole here when choosing the levelness of your spring, you would wanna use the lower hole here for your wear pad. Next, we're gonna install our middle spring. So this one is just like your front and your rear as far as the spring, it all looks the same. Your hardware here, this is going to be different. You're not gonna use uh, your regular bolt that we'd remove because this is gonna install on our box here. So this is just one of the larger diameter bolts, the same as the other brass ones that we've installed here. And you're gonna get a couple of spacers because our spring's the same width as our other ones here and our box is slightly wider, so we're gonna take up the gap with these. We'll take our spring now. We're just gonna set it into position here. There we go, just kind of set it into place. And now this is where it does get a little bit tricky just to hold all the pieces together. But we're gonna take the spring eye and we're gonna match that up with one of these two holes. Whichever hole we installed our wear pad on, that's the same hole we're going to install our spring on, the spring eye. So now we gotta take these little spacers here and put one on each side of this spring. So I'm just kind of lifting it up. I'm bringing a spacer up between the uh, slipper spring box in the spring, and then I'm gonna pull the spring towards me. And I'm pressing that spacer between the box and the spring. That way I can get this bolt started in here. There we go. We got it started through the spacer and the spring. Now we can take our other spacer. We're gonna line this up on the other side and then it is tight just like it was with the other one. We'll have to tap our bolt just a little bit to get it all the way through. So now we need to hold all these in place. So I'm just feeding that spacer in. Just lightly tapping on it. And here you can see our bolt slid through the slipper spring box, a spacer, then through the spring eye, through another spacer, and then out the other side of the slipper spring box. We'll then take a nylon locking nut and thread that on the other side. You can, we can take a look either straight up through the bottom or in from the side here and just double check yourself to make sure you've got all those lined up like we just talked about. So now that we've got the spring eye attached for our middle one here, the other side here is going to attach just like the other springs. We're going to hold it up, double check to make sure that this is level here at this hole. It should be, it should be in line with the rest, and it is. So now that we know that, we're going to hammer in that spacer, get these installed, and our wear pad, just exactly the same as the other ones. We can now go back and tighten down our hardware. For your brass hardware here, 
The head of the bolt is a 21 and the nut is a 22. So we'll tighten those down. And then for your smaller chrome bolts, it's going to be a 16 millimeter socket and wrench. We can now go back and torque our hardware to the specifications outlined in our instructions. So now we're gonna be replacing our U-bolts because these ones were too short for the suspension upgrades that we're gonna be putting on here. So we've got our new U-bolts here. We can see these side by side. I'll go ahead and take the nut off of it so you can see how this U-bolt is longer than the factory one. So we can see it side by side there. Looks like we got about an extra inch sticking out. And we can go ahead and take our tape measure and we're just gonna verify that. See, so yeah, it's about an inch. When you're measuring the length, you want to measure the inside dimension. So if we go here, it looks like our old U-bolts here were probably right at about seven inches. And our new ones here are right just under eight inches, maybe about seven and three quarter. And what that's going to do for us is give us the extra length that we need for the additional components that are going to go on top. So that way we've got enough room to fully install our nuts without uh, having it not go on all the way because we don't want to have part of the nut up and not be fully secured. We want to make sure that when we've got these on here, we've got at least a couple of threads poking through the top of the nut. And that way we can guarantee that we've got this nut fully secured and tightened down, keeping our axles in place. So we can go ahead and get these installed now. The diameter of the U-bolt that we took off was a half inch diameter and the spacing was three inches for a three inch axle. That's going to be the same on these. The only difference here is that these are going to be longer to accommodate our additional accessories. They're still a half inch diameter and they're designed to work with 5,200 to 7,000 pound axles. And we've got a triad of 7,000 pound axles on our trailer here. So this is going to be a perfect option for us. You will receive new washers and nuts as well. So you've got all the hardware you need because when you go to take your old U-bolts off, it's not uncommon for the ends here to get all boogered up because of rust and corrosion and things like that. So now we can get these installed. To get our axle back into place, first thing we want to do is use our jack here to lift the axle back up to contact the bottom of our spring. And if we look at the bottom of our spring, you can kind of see the peg here at the top that runs straight down and there's a nut on the bottom that's holding the stack together here. That nut needs to go down into the hole on the spring seat on our axle. So now I'm just jacking up the axle and I'm kind of pulling on it a little bit just guiding it up to make sure that it lines up with that hole and there it was it dropped right down into the hole if we kind of jiggle it we can feel that it's down inside of that alignment hole and if we look at the spring seat and the spring we can see that there's pretty much no gap between them which we would have a gap there if we missed the hole because that little peg would be putting a space in between so we since we have no space we know we're lined up all the way on the bottom, we're ready to put our U-bolts in place with our new bracket. So now we'll put our bracket in place. This is our front axle. So we need our bracket with the attachment ear here. This is where our shock's eventually going to attach to. That needs to face towards the rear of the trailer and towards the inside. So it's gonna sit on top of our spring, just like this. There's a hole in the center that'll line up with the peg on the top of your leaf spring stack and it's going to go ahead and want to fall off of there. So we're going to be lining that up, then we're going to take our U-bolts here, and this is going to slide up through the bottom, and we're going to poke this through the holes. So we're going to get those nuts off of there. And I recommend you probably should get the nuts off of both of them. It just makes it a little easier if you've got these prepared, so you can slide them up into place. So we can see how the bracket doesn't really want to sit up there by itself. So we'll just get these removed real fast. So now we're just going to take our U-bolt, we're going to slide it up around our axle, We'll take our bracket once again to make sure we've got it lined up with that center peg on top of the leaf spring stack. We'll then take the U-bolt and we're going to line it up with the holes in the bracket. And now this is where when you get a new leaf spring, a lot of times you have to spread it just a little bit to make it fit. So I'm through the hole here on the front. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the U-bolt here and I'm going to get it close to the hole and I'm going to barely just squeeze in to pull this apart because they are kind of tight. 
But with them being tight, that means it does kind of hold itself in there. You see I'm not holding the U-bolt. I'm just getting the bracket lined up with the peg. And then we can finish pushing that U-bolt up. We'll drop our washers down on top and then put our nuts into place. Once we get this done on this side, we're just going to repeat that for the U-bolt that's gonna slide in on the other side of our leaf spring and poke through these holes here. So we'll go ahead and get that in place. Similar to the other one, we'll have to get the one kind of started and then we can spread it out just a little bit to get it to push through the other. Double check ourselves to make sure that we are on that alignment peg there. And then we'll just drop our hardware down on here. Now these U-bolts, they are a little bit long. You can see we've got some excess here. The previous ones that we had weren't gonna be long enough to where we wouldn't have the threads poking through the top. They would have been in it, they would have ended up almost flush with the top of the nut and that, that just wouldn't have been enough. We wanna make sure we've got that extra so we know that it's secure. If we have a little bit of excess like that's, that's sticking up, in most cases it's gonna be fine, but if we think that it might contact any components, we can take a reciprocating saw and just trim off that excess. But we wanna make sure we get, we get them tightened on there first so we don't mess up any of the threads before we make our cut. So now we can tighten these down using a 19 millimeter socket. And tightening them down, you wanna make sure you kinda of go back and forth between them. So we wanna have roughly the same amount of threads poking out on each one. So we're just moving around as we snug them down. And then we'll torque our U-bolts to the manufacturer's specifications. We're going back and forth between these as well, because again, we want it to be tightened down evenly. So now that we've got this one installed, we're gonna repeat that process for the remaining two axles. They're gonna be exactly the same with the only difference being the orientation of our brackets. So our front axle, we've got the ear here for our shock facing towards the inside and towards the rear. For our middle axle, our bracket is gonna have the exact same orientation. But for our rear axle, it's gonna be the opposite. It's still gonna to face towards the inside, but it's gonna face towards the front. So now we've got our suspension fully installed up there. Next, we can install the shock absorbers from our kit. With our slipper spring boxes, it makes it really easy because our mounting location is going to be on the slipper spring box and then it's going to attach to our bracket here. Now, we do need to change our angle because our shock here is going to go from up there and it needs to be at about this angle here. So we've got extensions that come in our kit to bring this down to line up with our shock. The strap on our shock keeps it at the length that it's supposed to be at when the suspension is loaded. So sometimes it's best to do this when it's on the ground, but uh, with this particular one, when we've got it hanging here, this can really only go in one position on this particular trailer. So we can go ahead and just get this in place. So here we can see our extension. There's four holes in our extension, and you can see that this hole here on the one side has a larger gap between this hole and this hole, and these ones are all evenly spaced. The evenly spaced ones are where it'll attach to our leaf spring bracket here. There's two holes in this bracket and those are gonna line up with the two holes in this bracket. And this is our furthest extension to bring it down as far as possible, but you can also move it up. That'll change the angle for your shock and it'll also change its extension position. But for this trailer, this would be too close. We'd have our springs too compressed. So we wanna put it down into this position here. So we're gonna take the shorter bolts that come in our kit here. They're gonna slide through our extension. Then that's gonna slide through our bracket there. We'll take a nylon locking nut and we're gonna place that on the other side. I was gonna show you this real quick. We can go ahead and put this one on here and I'll show you with the other uh, nut. But there are very similar size nuts for the ones that attach your shock absorbers but they are a different thread pitch. So I'll show you that real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. So here we've got our short bolt, and then this is the nut that pairs with it. 
and you can see it threads on there nice and easy. These longer bolts here are a similar diameter and the nut looks very similar, but you can see that it's a much shorter nut. So the taller nuts are the ones that go with your short bolts and the shorter nuts go with your longer bolts. We'll now take our other bolt here and this is just gonna slide through our extension just like the other bolt there. We'll get that one started. Now we can go ahead and tighten these down. We're gonna use a 19 millimeter socket and wrench to tighten them down. So we'll just grab those here. I'm just gonna snug that one up there. We'll snug that one there. And then we can go ahead and torque these to the manufacturer's specifications. It's a little easier to torque these now before putting your shock in place. So now we can go ahead and get that shock mounted up. And if we look here, that hole where we're gonna mount the shock on our slipper spring lines up pretty darn close with the hole on our, the bottom of our bracket down there. So we're gonna take that long bolt. This is gonna get a flat washer. We can then slide this through the shock and we're sliding it through the bottom so we can see the comfort ride and everything written on it there. We're gonna then put a spacer on it. That's gonna slide through the extension bracket. We'll put another flat washer on it and then follow it up with that short nylon locking nut. Now we're gonna take very similar hardware for up top. But we've got a couple of extra spacers that are gonna go in there and these spacers are angled. So we're just gonna take a bolt again. We put our flat washer on it. We'll bring our shock up. We're gonna slide the bolt with the washer on it through the shock. On the other side, we're gonna put the spacer. And then this is the other spacer. It's a wedge-shaped spacer. That's gonna go on there next. We can now slide this through. And it is a little bit off. It's not gonna be perfect. So what you're gonna to need to do is we're gonna pull our shock down just a little bit like that to compress it. We'll take our strap off of there. And then we can slowly let it decompress until it lines up with our hole. There we go. And you might need to tap it in there just because of the pressure of the shock. Kind of wants to cock it at a little bit of an angle and it can make it bind a little bit. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take our shock here at the top. I'm gonna pull it to compress it and then I'm just gonna be tapping it lightly with the hammer. Now on the opposite side, this is inside the slipper spring box now, we'll take the other wedge spacer that comes in our kit, we're gonna slide it on there. That does have a specific orientation we're gonna be putting it in, but let's not worry about that until we start to get closer to tightening it down because it's just gonna to wanna to fall out of the position we try to put it in until we get it close. So we'll just follow that up then with a flat washer and then one of those shorter nylon locking nuts. So we can get that started and then we can move back down to our bottom ones here and we'll grab our 19 millimeter socket and wrench once again and we'll snug these up. We're also gonna snug the top up a little bit. We're not gonna snug it up all the way just yet. Well, we need to take up some of this space to make it easier to get those wedge spacers in the correct orientation. So that's pretty close. I've got it to where it's almost run down. So here we're looking at the inside for that wedge on the inside. The one on the outside has a specific orientation too, but it pretty much likes to fall naturally into that position because the thicker part of the wedge normally wants to fall down to the bottom like that because it's the heaviest. So on the outside, we want the thicker part of the wedge to be at the bottom, kind of angling towards our shock here with the thinner part towards the top. The one here on the inside, we just want to do the exact opposite. So we're gonna bring this around until we've got the fat part about like that right there as the top and the skinny part at the bottom. And then we're just gonna continue snugging these up. So I'm gonna slide my wrench up in here 
get it in place. I'm gonna hold the wrench and I'm gonna hold the little spacer in the correct orientation. And then I'm gonna finish tightening it down. And there we can see we got exactly what we want. We've got the thin part angled right down towards our shock at the bottom. And then on the opposite side, we've got the thicker part. So now we can go ahead and go back and torque down both the upper and the lower shock bolts. We use our 19 millimeter socket and wrench once again to do so. So now that we've got our shock fully installed here, we're going to move on to the two remaining ones. They're gonna install the exact same way. This one's gonna to angle towards the rear and then our rear one's gonna be the same except it's gonna to angle towards the front. Now our U-bolts here, they are sticking up a little bit far. We had replaced them to make sure we've got enough sticking through, but we've got some excess here that is pretty close to our brake components here. If we didn't have this electric over hydraulic, we'd probably be okay, but with these in place, just as a safety precaution, we're gonna trim these down. We're just gonna use a cutoff wheel here to trim off some of the excess. And we're just gonna repeat that for each one to trim those down. And now that we've got this side fully tightened and torqued down, everything's ready to go, all our shocks are in place, we're ready to repeat all these same procedures over on the other side to get that side installed over there. Now, when you go to install things on the other side, this is the driver's side on our trailer here. And this is the very rear hanger for our suspension system. And you'll notice here that this is our black water pipe coming down there. And it's so close to the uh, hanger here that if your bolts uh, going in this direction from the inside towards the outside, you're not gonna be able to push that bolt out. So what you can do, if that is that case, you can take the nut off and then you can push the bolt out just a little bit, maybe push it out about a quarter of an inch, just enough to be able to fit a reciprocating saw blade in there. And then you can cut the head of that bolt off. You wanna to try to make sure you cut off the serrated part on the head there because that serrated part is gonna to try to stay inside your hanger. If you get that cut off, then the bolt should pull out nice and easy. And that completes our installation of Roadmaster's Comfort Ride Suspension System for triple axles on our 2020 Grand Design Momentum.